Our next uh, speaker is uh, uh, Mr. Chi Sum Lee. He's a director and government and infrastructure advisor, KPMG Advisor, Hong Kong Limited. Chi Sum is a director and a member of the leadership team of KPMG's government and the infrastructure advisory practice and a senior representative of KPMG's connected enterprise in Asia Pacific region. Chi Sum's uh, expertise extends to providing commercial, financial, and operational advice to clients in the infrastructure, construction, and the government sector, and more than 20 successful closed major cross uh, the sport, major projects across the sports, transport, health, social, and the commercial property sectors. Uh, his topic is uh, Indonesia's uh, green infrastructure market. So let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Chi Sum Lee. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, all the guests. Yeah. And uh, my name is Chi Sum. I'm a director from Government and Infrastructure Advisory. Um, today, I will be um, sharing with you uh, our views on Indonesia's green infrastructure market. Definitely a very, very exciting market. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to thank you um, all of your time and also um, Dashen Foundation's invitation and Ronald, your facilitation. Um, it is our great honor to share this um, uh, topic with you. Let me change it to um, presentation mode. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, um, let me introduce myself. Um, I started my career as a project finance specialist um, um, in, in a bank, and I was managing a one billion credit portfolio for different infrastructure investment and also capital project. And, um, and then I also spent um, a number of years in Southeast Asia managing different capital projects in the region. Uh, um, I'm doing proprietary investment for uh, my firm. And um, until recently, I have been um, with KPMG Advisory, working on um, strategy and commercial plan of different infrastructure. And I've closed more than 20 successfully um, projects successfully um, um, throughout my career. Today about um, Indonesia's green uh, infrastructure, um, I'll be talking about the trends and drivers there. What are the interesting and exciting key asset classes um, that we'd like to uh, look at for investment opportunities. And uh, most importantly, what's, you know, what does it mean for, for us in Hong Kong? So first of all, um, I'll share an overview on um, the trends and drivers of the market. Um, to start the um, um, sharing, um, why green infrastructure? In the market, there are four drivers that we are seeing that will push the um, demand and also the opportunities of green infrastructure in Indonesia. Um, the first one is a nationally determined contribution goal. Um, the Indonesian government has committed to reduce 29% of um, greenhouse gas uh, by 2030. And um, they have an even more ambitious target with 41% if there's global support and investment um, to, to help them to do that. So a um, national determination and also a funding budget for this. And the second driver is um, um, as the Southeast Asian countries, they are doing their recovery from COVID-19, Indonesia in particular, they have introduced a what we call a green recovery program, whereas they will um, invest um, uh, a large amount of money into low carbon and green sectors in order to stimulate the economy um, um, to recover from COVID-19. So a very clear direction on um, green sector um, in order to um, um, uh, bring the economy back to life. And the third driver is we're seeing a clear funding gap for in particular climate resilient infrastructure. For every single year, we are seeing 500, more than five uh, 50 billion um, dollars um, USD funding gap in this infrastructure and um, um, the local sector there and the government there are pushing out a lot of commercially attractive project in order to get um, international partnership and international support to get into this area. And the fourth driver we're seeing is, um, um, like I've mentioned, a lot of government policies, initiatives to support 
um, international interest or international investment in this, into these areas. And, um, and interestingly, um, we are also getting a lot of uh, uh, multilateral development banks to um, invest in this region and to um, carry out certain um, uh, reference projects in order to be the catalyst for the market, which I will share later on in, in, in the following slides. So it's important to look at the uh, latest trends of green infrastructure in this market. Um, there are a number of green uh, government objectives. Um, of all these uh, strategic objectives, we are looking at um, a net zero target by Indonesian government by 2060, a coal phase out, complete coal phase out by 2056, and um, Indonesian government building new capital and this new capital is supposed to carry a lot of green infrastructure because it's built from scratch and there are certain commitments from the government on that already. And uh, right now, green energy and transportation already make up uh, more than 75% of the Indonesia climate funding uh, needs and also budget. Uh, in the future, we're going to see um, increasing amounts uh, to be put into this area. And in order to enable this, um, in 2015, um, the Ind Indonesian government actually has made a reform on the PPP. Um, and the reform included improved transparency in the tender process, in particular to appeal um, um, to the international players. And there are certain clarification on land acquisition laws to make sure um, the uh, ownership um, rise, or the rise of ownership um, is clear to um, all the players in the region. And uh, we're, we're also seeing um, green bonds and sovereign um, uh, Muslim bonds to be issued in the region to support this infrastructure. Um, there are also 19 special economic zones um, in which um, uh, a lot of tax and also policy support in these zones um, in order to encourage investment and development in these areas. Okay. So to sum it up, um, we're seeing 12 billion potential um, uh, projects in the pipeline, and they uh, represent 97 um, renewable energy projects in, in the pipeline. Um, we are also seeing 75% of the budget, climate funding budget will be used on energy and transportation. So all these exciting um, um, trends and movements in the green infrastructure sector. Like I've mentioned, um, the government policies included economic um, opportunities, supply side, uh, certain party industries to be um, um, nominated by the Indonesian government and uh, meet the long-term goal of, um, of the government as well. So when it comes to economic opportunities, there are 19 um, um, special economic zones. Um, and this represents reloc relocation of capital from um, the originally mature areas to emerging areas for which um, opportunities are thriving. Um, in 2018, um, the Indonesian uh, government, Ministry of Finance indeed, issued their first corporate uh, green bond in the capital market. And this sets the precedence of a lot of um, um, investment opportunities in the green sector um, for the years coming. There's also a uh, SDG, Sustainable Development Goal Indonesia One Platform, to standardize the um, green sector development in, in the region. And we have also got the um, uh, an investment list confirming that there will be priority investment in electricity, green energy, transport, uh, low carbon transport, and health, um, water supply. Now a quick overview on the trends and um, uh, the exciting development of the industry. I'd like to share with you, there are certain asset classes that are particularly um, uh, interesting and attractive to investors or to different players. There are four, renewable energy, low carbon transport, sustainable waste and sustainable water. And I'll go through them one by one uh, with case studies to illustrate um, what we see the opportunities are. The first one is renewable energy. Um, as of 2020, 
75% of energy comes from fossil fuel in Indonesia. Um, and um, um, there is a ambitious plan of Indonesian government that by 2060, um, we are going to reach net zero carbon in the country. Yeah. And therefore we are seeing a lot of renewable energy uh, projects in the pipeline, uh, spreading across solar, wind energy, uh, hydropower and geothermal power as well. And um, what's interesting is that um, between 2016 and 2019, there are already about 60% of these investments come from private sector, uh, which means um, this market is open to the private sector and we're seeing increasing capital and interest from the private sector to join this market. And most of the projects um, we're talking about in the pipeline are eligible for green bonds indeed. And um, at this moment, we're seeing six hydropower um, in terms of key project, six hydropower, two geothermal um, power project, and three solar um, projects. Um, the total investment um, at the time of um, speaking, uh, we're talking about USD 3.8 to 5 billion. And this is one of the case study or example of um, the re renewable energy. It's a geothermal project. Um, it's already under um, construction and uh, it will operate commercially in 2023 next year. Um, what's interesting about this project is, um, is a typical PPP, which attracts a local partner and also a US player in this. Um, and in this um, project is a joint venture structure uh, 49% were invested by the US-based um, company in which they will supply their technical expertise, equipment, and also certain investment. And 51% were actually um, covered by um, a local partner, a local gas and oil company. And um, this deal already secure a 30-year power purchase agreement from the local partner, which means that um, for the next 30 years, the revenue is going to be, um, and the demand is going to be guaranteed. And in, in addition to that, um, it is uh, fully supported by Indonesian government. The national banks have actually contributed 28 million um, working capital funding. So going forward, we're going to see a lot of um, renewable energy in this space, in particular, um, combining the expertise or equipment from um, the developed countries and also the support and the local partner um, um, demand guarantee uh, from Indonesia. And the second asset class, which is um, um, equally interesting is low carbon transport. In, uh, in Indonesia, as, as of uh, now, 70 to 80% of the outdoor pollution in urban areas is driven by transport emissions. And, um, and also the congestion in um, big cities like Jakarta um, represents 5 billion USD loss to the economy. Now, um, the Indonesian government are uh, rolling out plans to develop uh, what we call the BRT, Bus Rapid Transport System, in 29 cities and also railway networks in these cities. And half of the government national strategic project pipeline are, um, are dedicated to transport infrastructure as well. And, um, and half of that um, is going to be driven by green transportation, green infrastructure. What we're seeing now is um, we have eight railway projects and one um, transit oriental, oriented development projects in the pipeline. Um, these nine projects represented a total investment of uh, 14 billion to 18 billion. And this is one of the example where um, we are seeing the Indonesian government are rolling out a PV project for one of the routes of the railway. And uh, this is a um, uh, line that supplied to social infrastructure um, connecting the Jakarta International Stadium. And um, this stadium is going to be complete in April, 2022. Um, and um, connection to this is going to be um, 
uh, important and the demand is um, going to be guaranteed as well. And the third um, asset classes we see interesting is sustainable water. In um, 2018, 56% um, of the area um, in Indonesia were affected by um, flood uh, on an annual basis. Um, and then at the same time, um, Indonesia also um, are facing the threat of rising sea levels, poor urban planning, land use changes, and the de deforestation. In certain areas, um, there are only 62% uh, of the population had access to clean water. And if you look at the whole country, um, the safe water coverage nationally is just 72%. And um, there is a plan to achieve 100% access to safe drinking water by 2024. Now, this will require a combination of government support and also private sector investment. And uh, going forward, um, um, we'll see a number of um, water supply infrastructure and also um, the uh, climate resilient infrastructure as well. Yeah. According to the five year plan, there are five ongoing projects already. It represents 2.7 billion and 5 billion. There are some uh, example projects that I would like to share as well to illustrate um, the, um, the interest in the market. We have what we are seeing are two uh, projects, um, both are climate resilient projects. And um, um, what the first one is about um, PPP, um, it, which is a fairly innovative structure, DBFOMT. And DBFOMT um, uh, FOMT stands for um, Design, Build, Finance, Maintain, and Transfer. Okay, and um, which is a um, what we call an end-to-end -end cycle uh, public and private partnership uh, uh, project. And the other one we we're looking at is um, a project that uh, recruiting um, international multilateral bank ADB um, for the loan and also for the state budget to uh, support this project. And uh, at the moment, they're looking for an international operator to operate this. The fourth asset class, um, which I'd like to share is sustainable waste. Now sustainable waste um, um, in Indonesia is mostly focused on waste to energy and also um, intermediate treatment facility. In, um, in Indonesia, um, half of the population, they live in urban areas, um, but 40% of the urban residents, they have limited access to waste collection. And uh, in rural areas, the um, uh, the demand is even higher. 85% of plastic waste remains un uh, uncollected. Okay. So the uncollected waste represents a major problem to both um, urban and rural areas and also creates a, um, an issue for the uh, public hygiene as well. And with regards to this, um, the Indonesian government are rolling out um, 13 ongoing projects. Uh, most of them are about waste to energy in 12 cities. Um, they are going to be developed from 2021 to 2030. They represent a total investment of 1.7 to 4 billion. And also there is a national partnership action plan issued by Indonesia in 2020 to reduce the marine plastic uh, waste by 70%. Uh, once again, a um, example of waste to energy um, project. Uh, this is a, a project being planned at the moment. And um, this project is going to replace the uh, demand of the landfill, which will be full by, um, by this year indeed. And going forward, we're looking at um, different projects um, in PVP capacity on waste management and power generation. And uh, what's interesting is that waste management is 
available to 100% um, international ownership, uh, which means that local partner may or may not be necessary, um, but um, um, there will be a lot of flexibility to international player to get into this area. Now I'd like to share with you um, what it means to Hong Kong, what it means to our um, players in the um, infrastructure industry. So there are three areas that I think um, for Hong Kong players, we can actually tap into this market. The first one is um, um, in Hong Kong, we, are full, we have full access to GBA supply chain capabilities, um, including the um, GBA area, um, the green infra te technology. Um, and advanced modular systems. We have also um, the privilege or advantage to leverage any new technology on our R&D, um, which could be developed in the GBA and we can export it to the Indonesian market. Um, and also um, Hong Kong plays an important role um, to develop standards, standards and certifications of either infrastructure building materials or technology between mainland China and ASEAN. The second area that we can play is actually our, um, you know, traditional strength, the capital market. Um, going forward, there will be a lot of um, projects that require um, international support or international participation in different capacities. Um, one of the key capacity is um, the funding or the investment. So Hong Kong will continue to play as an important capital market um, for mainland Chinese investors and for Southeast Asian um, capital projects. And uh, it will also help the Chinese um, investors for their go out policy, uh, you know, they invest into various um, um, uh, Indonesian projects. And last but not least, um, Hong Kong uh, itself actually has a lot of technical strength in terms of infrastructure or building area. For example, our modular construction expertise are actually uh, um, leading the world. Our green standards, BIM Plus, um, um, a green building standard, uh, which we can export to um, uh, Indonesian market for um, their use. Um, we are also developing a number of um, regional leading green building, smart building, and infra tech, um, um, uh, which we can share with Indonesian market and also use advantage when we pursue those um, commercially attractive projects in the region. And I think that concludes my sharing here. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Tishong. Uh, it's a quite an uh, ambitious uh, target for the uh, Indonesian government. And uh, I think uh, there's a lot of opportunities for Hong Kong uh, players to, to participate. So probably we can have some questions from the floor or online. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Very good uh, presentation on the uh, overall uh, Indonesian uh, economic, economic outlook and infrastructure. For Hong Kong companies, I, I would like to ask you if you can describe what kind of a company structure is best to enter the market in terms of uh, when finding a partner or uh, uh, going a uh, wholly owned or you know, to take advantage of the uh, new economic changes, uh, uh, especially uh, ESG uh, uh, projects, and, uh, and also if uh, they into uh, uh, different investment uh, projects. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, I, I think your question is, um, you know, what sort of structure is best for Hong Kong player to come in, right? And uh, I think it depends on different players. Um, for example, if I'm just a financial investor, uh, I would uh, like to share that um, um, that investment with um, certain equity elements would be great. Um, what we call in this industry, what we call masculine debt, or what you like, a convertible bond in this area. Um, convertible bond provides a certain, um, um, what we call a, um, downside protection, but at the same time, you may be able to cap into this um, equity upside of that project. Um, it usually are, are fairly um, um, uh, optimal in markets, um, emerging markets like Indonesia, where you have a lot of government support and fairly transparent policy. 
um, which you can leverage the equity upside. But at the same time, um, there are certain um, risks in that area of where financial investors, they would like certain protection in order to increase their appetite. So that's uh, number one. And um, if you're coming in from a technology partner angle, it, it presents a great opportunity for you to be the advisor where you add as the um, advisory role to collect your advisory revenue from that. Um, but in the meantime, you might want to have certain, maybe a very small um, you know, shareholding in that area to encourage your, um, your support and also uh, your story in the, in the region. Um, if you are looking at a major construction partner, um, I think it's best that you can consider to work with um, um, Chinese state-owned enterprise to form a joint venture and to go into the area to leverage our um, national influence and national um, expertise to, um, to get into this market. And, uh, and in this capacity, I would even suggest that you can be the major contractor to go for certain projects. Um, for example, like I've mentioned, um, if you can um, do certain ways to power energy, project or certain um, low carbon transport um, uh, project, um, that would be excellent. In the meantime, um, with this um, powerful consortium, uh, if you like, you can easily generate certain um, off-take agreement with, from the local partner or from the local players um, um, to ensure you have the demand side um, um, check the box. Uh, any other questions? Uh, hello, uh, this is Michael Gerard, uh, Executive Committee Member of Agile Foundation. Uh, in one of the slides that you mentioned about the, uh, the green taxonomy, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on uh, this green taxonomy uh, applications uh, and how it is being used uh, in the Indonesia? Thank you. Well, uh, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, as much as I would like to elaborate, um, what I could only report to you that um, Indonesian government is um, working hard to draft a green taxonomy at the moment. Um, currently, the timeline is has not been updated us, but um, I we believe that the first draft will be uh, announced public. Um, I think by this year or early next year. Uh, 